Day 302. In the southern part of the Donetsk region, the battle for Marinka intensifies. Harsh news came in saying that the Russians, in one thrust, managed to take control over two streets, reaching the main avenue that splits the settlement in half. The head of the Donetsk People's Republic announced that 80% of the settlement was taken, adding that the main defenses were breached and that soon Marinka would collapse causing a chain reaction and collapsing Krasnogorivka, Novomikhailivka and even Vuhledar. However, the Ukrainian defense line here is still far from being breached, and here is why. First of all, the Russians did not establish control over 80% of the settlement. Geolocated footage confirms that the separation lines go through Druzhby Avenue, which implies that the Russians control slightly more than half of the village, 55-60% to 60% maximum. Secondly, the projections of the collapse of Marinka were based on the fact that the Russians took two streets in one day, which is why some Russian analysts said that Marinka would fall within five to seven days. But such tempo is not representative of the average Russian pace of advancement, which is confirmed by the fact that the Russians have not gained any ground over the last three days. Thirdly, even though the Russians managed to establish control over two streets in one day, it was only because the Ukrainians decided to retreat from these blocks to avoid crossfire and minimize the losses. This is because in the northern part of the region, the Russians established control over this triangle, which allows the Russians to have total fire control over the whole avenue. This is a unique situation that will not work very well in other parts of Marinka. And if we look back, we can see that it took 10 months for the Russians to establish control over 14 streets. So the Russian progress here has been plotting. At the beginning of the war, the fights had been taking place around Tarikon, which implies that the Russians started by controlling 5 to 7 streets. This means that in the first 10 months of the war, the Russians established control over an additional 40% of Marienka, and right now they have 40% more to go. If the historical trend continues and the main fundamental factors do not change, the Russians will need another 10 months to establish full control over Marienka. And the main fundamental factors will not change. As you can see, Marienka receives supplies and reinforcements directly from the back. So the Ukrainians in Marienka have a short paved road that connects them to Georgievka. Speaking about supplies, some sources say that the fall of Marienka would mean that Krasnogorivka would lose its supplies and become an easy target. But as we discussed yesterday, the roads between Marinka and Krasnohorivka are not used anyways, because they are too close to the front and there are many other ways to receive supplies. On top of that, due to the geography, the Russians will only be able to attack Krasnohorivka in front, which is arguably even stronger than Marinka. So big frontline shifts are not expected here. Somewhat the same can be said about the southern part of the front line, although here, to be honest, the situation is more problematic. Firstly, almost all supplies in this region go through Kurachove, so the loss of Marinka means little to Novomikhailivka from the point of view of receiving supplies. On the other side, Novomikhailivka becomes more vulnerable to flank attacks. In fact, the Russians are already trying to leverage the southern part of Marinka that they control to conduct attacks on Pobeda. If the Russians take Pobeda, then the Ukrainians will have more problems. As the fields are very wide, the Russians may open access to many settlements from the flank, and even though they would not be able to storm the settlements in this way, they would still be able to fix Ukrainian troops. The Ukrainians understand this, and they're already taking some action. For example, yesterday the Ukrainians took control over a checkpoint that allows them to counter Russian attacks on Pobeda. Lastly, in the worst case scenario, if the Ukrainians lose Marinka and Novomikhailivka, the front line will not collapse, it will just move to the next settlements on the line, where the Ukrainians also have a lot of fortifications. Local geography and the efficient supply system of this group of settlements ensure that the Russians will not be able to move through this region fast. As noted by the Institute for the Study of War, even some Russian military analysts admit that even after fully capturing Marinka, the accumulation of Ukrainian fortified areas in the vicinity of Marinka will likely continue to constrain the actions of Russian forces in the area. Overall, 
The Ukrainians are successfully blocking Russian advances in this region, and the Marinka group will not collapse anywhere in the near future. Recent Russian advances inside the settlement stem from the tactical decisions of the Ukrainian command, not the breach in the defense. And so far the Ukrainians are effectively countering all Russian attempts to establish control over the fields. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.